Hi, this is Brendan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and I'm here with Jim Pinto for another episode of Metal Workshop, and today we're going to be going over our top five metal instrumental songs. Um, these had to be metal songs, so if if it was clean guitar the whole way through, it went right off the list. It's it's yeah. It's got to be actual metal, and so it turned out this was kind of a difficult top five list to make, wasn't it, Jim? Uh it was more difficult for you because you kept picking bad songs. Um, but yeah, it wasn't easy. I I did the other one within 10 minutes. And this one took an hour or so of thinking. Mm. Well, uh, I, and I feel and then like... I, I couldn't even pick a Megadeth one. I struggled because there, there's three. I, I feel like, again, it's a memory thing too where I know I've encountered a lot of other instrumental songs over the years that I'm just not recalling. Do you know what I mean? That, right. That, that maybe would have made the list. Um, well, but if you're not recalling them, there's a reason. They're not as strong. Well, I don't know. The question is, is it because the song's not as strong or is my brain to blame? You know, there's, well, I, I, I think, I think that, uh, I think in some instances it's the song. I think in some instances it's, it's probably uh, age and, and memory starting to go. Um, but, okay, so you said you wanted me to start with number five, right, on my list this time? Yeah, well, what I wanted to say first before you do your list is mm. we have two duplicates. One of them is pretty obvious because yes. you can't talk about instrumental metal without talking about this song. Yep. And the reason it's so successful, I guess I'll wait to say why it's so successful when it's our turn, my turn. But we are going to have duplicates, but I don't know where yours fall because I sent you mine in order and you didn't yeah. send me yours in order. No. This will be surprising, and I don't rem I don't remember the order that you put yours in either. Yeah, so. yeah, that's and that's fine. I think that's yeah. that'll be more fun doing it that way. So, so the first one is I is I know a divisive one, and I actually kind of picked it because I instinctively knew <laughs> that you would probably not like it. Uh, um, I, like it was between this and another song, and I was I I was like, I well, this one gonna be. Yeah. So, <laughs> Takata and D by Sirithungle. Um <sighs> And so, 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 why don't you, why don't you, you lead into the discussion? I, you I have... literally have my head in my hand right now. <laughs> you can't see it, but my head is in my hand right now. So, vent. Give us. Give, well, no, don't vent. Explain why you didn't like the song. That's probably a better way to to go. About uh, this. Okay. First of all, I think classical music actually works to transpose into metal, mm -hmm. but transposition means doing a little bit of work. <laughs> can't just go note for note yeah that's one two it's bach it's not it's not any of the more modern classical composers yeah it's it's the guy that's 200 years ahead of everybody when he came out 200 years before everybody so there's there's something wrong with pick he's a math genius so, bach is so a math genius but i understand something... i understand your first criticism but the second one i'm a little unclear on why that. Because Bach is just chamber music. It's light. Oh, I see what you're saying. Goofy chamber music, and it's he's good. I love Bach. He gets mm. a pass for being chamber music, but a note for note transposition by a band like Sirith Uncle, who really aren't even masters of their craft. It it was it's a tough listen, right? It's yep. just. Have you ever heard the Star Wars music done to disco? No, and I don't want to, to be honest. I, I'm <laughs> it not, I'm, it I'm... reminded me of that so, so, when so, I heard it. So I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll leap to their defense in a moment. But first, I want to say another reason I picked this is because we do have another song on the list that is also about transposing classical into metal. And I thought that it would be helpful to have a contrast. Yeah, um, no, that's, a, that's yeah. really great thinking. Um, I hadn't considered that. Um, but, but so my defense of it is this is definitely, this is not like... They're not. It's not that these guys are unskilled. They're. I, I think they are a skilled band, but they're. They're like a basic metal band. This group, right? They. 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 You didn't hear the vocals, so you don't really have that as a as a feature to sort of weigh in on. But they're. They're sort of one of these early '80s metal bands that was, you know, sounding a little bit like Iron Maiden, a little bit like Judas Priest, a little bit like some other bands. They had a lot of rough edges. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but I like that this just sounds to me like a band just trying to emulate, you know, a classical song that they like. Um, right, right. That's, that's what I like about it. So I like that it's, it's clear that, I mean, I mean, I don't know, maybe they did look at the, at the sheet music. I, I don't, I don't know. Cause, cause it does seem like it's note for note. Like I, it, 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 it you know, it, 
I don't know the whole song completely by heart, but uh, it sounds like Takata and Fugue to me. Um, and also Takata and Fugue is a, is, is a, uh, a classical piece that I really like. And right. it's, it's one that I think sounds very simple, but is actually quite difficult to do. And they were actually doing some things in here that are not easy. So one of the things that they were doing is they were harmonizing and they were building those chords that they play on the organ right. and, with multiple tracks. That's insanely difficult. I've tried to do that myself. That's a really hard thing to do the way that they did it. But the other thing I like about it is the guitar tone that they get in this song. I really like just the the crunch of the guitar and the way that it sounds when he goes to the higher pitch notes. Whatever whatever settings and distortion he has on there, it's 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 sort of an older blend that I appreciate that we don't really get anymore. Um and and so yeah, so those are the reasons why I like the song. But it's it's also my number five for a reason. It's definitely not the best on the list. Um Right. So and clearly Jim does not approve of this one. So I, uh, I yeah, I just don't. So I, no, that's I fine. All of your that's points, totally fine. I, I, I think it's good that we have differences of opinions because right. I do a lot of shows like this and when everybody agrees, it's a boring discussion. It so, is a boring yeah. discussion. I've I've done that before too. I was on a podcast once where the interviewers weren't even listening to the answers and yeah just yeah okay yeah okay yeah it was great then, wasn't it and then you're getting done talking about what you're working on and then they ask so what's coming next <laughs> well, i think i just answered that question yeah. uh all right so why don't, why don't you give us your number five then uh my number five was megadeth lungs uh, into the lungs of hell mm -hmm. uh, which is their first instrumental uh, off of so far so good so what I believe yeah it is off I that could, yeah um, and I was torn between this and um, oh crap I'm forgetting the name now I just had it uh, conquer or die uh, which I think is really strong the pro the problem I have with with a lot of instrumentals is usually they're not long enough mm -hmm. uh, they're they're showing off as fast as they can play. A lot of the time and what I wanted out of both of these that I picked that I was struggling with for Megadeth is I wanted them to be longer. But the reason right. I picked Into the Lungs of Hell is I've known it longer yep. and it, there was just that hard, grungy, rough distortion to that opening. And it's, and it's a chord. Does. It's an actual chord yeah, that he's playing. Full on or, open chord. Yeah. And I just love I just love how rough it sounds in comparison to the rest of the album and i just had to pick it yeah no that that is that's a really good song i i didn't object to it i honestly might have included it on the list but i didn't want us to double up too much and i didn't want to pick another megadeth song from the same album uh you know t twice in a row um but yeah I, I have no disagreements with that song at all and yeah. and i and i and i i really love the sound of that open chord I, we've talked about it before so i don't want to you know i don't want to beat a dead horse here but the the, the way that he incorporates open chords into his heavy playing is something that I think really sets his sound apart. Um, and that's a, that's a good example of it. Did you have any other yeah, thoughts? Yeah, yeah. Oh. No, no. I, and I agree. I think he gets away with it. I think there's a lot of people that can't do it and still be metal. And he does. Well, there's, there's two difficulties with it. Number one, you can slip out of metal by doing that. But number two, yeah. it's really hard to find the right level of distortion for that open chord so that you can actually hear the chord. And most people, when they do do it, they, they do it. So they, there's so much fuzz on it. It's, it's not decipherable if they're trying to, cause it, it's, it's a really fine line. Uh, and I, I've always had difficulty with it. I, I, if I'm playing an open chord, it's going to be clean. Do you know what I mean? It was, I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm not generally comfortable doing distorted open chords like he is. And I think it's cause he's, he's, he's comfortable putting just enough distortion on it. He has enough faith that the rest of the stuff is heavy that he puts just enough and, and it works. Um, but yeah, so uh, so I guess we're on to number four then, right? Yeah, um, you're number four. So my number four, and this was a hard one because I was picking between a lot of different Iron Maiden songs for this one, but I went with Genghis Khan. Um, I was thinking of the Ides, Ides of March, which is really short, but I really like that one. And right. Lost for Words is just kind of, um, I'm not that big into it, but it's a it's a significant uh, song off of that album and 
you know, a lot of people know it. But I like Genghis Khan as an as an example of the overall Iron Maiden sound. And I like that it sort of demonstrates kind of the sort of uh, sort of really quick, rapid changes and and rhythmic styles that they do, and then yeah. in the middle of the song, you get into this really sweet sounding melodic thing that almost sounds like the tone they were getting off of somewhere in time. It sounds it's very it's it, it's very sort of looking into the future in terms of because this is I think off of Iron Maiden off the 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 Iron Maiden album Iron Maiden so. Um, so it just kind of feels a little different too than a lot of the material that's on that album for me. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know uh, what your thoughts are on this song. Um, the reason I didn't pick an Iron Maiden instrumental is because their songs with lyrics are so effing good, even even when they're not a good song. Yeah. The transitions are so strong, and I'll use Seventh Son of, his, of Seventh Son as my uh, example because it's my favorite solo guitar solo from Iron Maiden. The build up to that solo and the last what is it, five, six minutes of that thing is in and of itself its own instrumental. And it's yeah. so good and strong that them doing a song that's just them noodling around, so to speak, for lack of a better phrase, yeah. uh, is almost a waste of time. Because I want I want them to just do their best work all the time. I, a power slave or a peace of mind kind of composition of songs, that whole range. They don't need to do lost for words on power slave. Yeah. Um, well, I would kind of agree with that. Um, yeah. I mean, I like lost for words is not my favorite song in the world. Um, one of the, the reason that I like Genghis Khan is because I find the melody in the second half very memorable. Uh, whereas lost for words kind of feels like, like, just sort of dicking around a little bit. Do you know what I mean? It's got, and yeah, it also yeah, yeah. has a light feel to it that I just, I, I, it just doesn't have any weight in the, in the same way. Yeah. I, I will say the Ides of March, I think is a, is an exceptional song. Um, but it's just so short and, yeah. and, and it, it doesn't have a, a lot of meat to it. Do you know what I mean? But, but I really like the sound of it. Um, right. Uh, yeah. But, and, and there's nothing wrong with the instrumentals that they're doing insofar as they stand if any other band were doing them at that level of quality you go holy crap that's mm. fantastic it's just with iron maiden i want i want the whole buffet yeah no and i i agree with you i mean i'm most of, if i listen to iron maiden i'm generally going to put in a song that has lyrics um, yeah. because i know the instrumentation is going to be there anyways i don't need yeah. an instrumental uh, exactly exactly so, so what is your number four my number four was Tool Triad, mm -hmm. and I struggled here because Tool has a number of good instrumentals, but this one is just so... It comes at the right time on the album. Mm -hmm. It's so emotional after you've already gotten beaten up by um, Fiap, I think is the song, or Reflection before this. I can't remember what comes before the album, and Lateralis. Okay. You've been so beat up on the album already that when you get to this, it's a nice cooling off period. And that, that, that sort of African, almost African beat with the Tom Tom, uh, throughout the song is just so strong. Um, uh, I can't get enough of it. Now I actually listened to discuss the painted a lot more, but it has a little bit of lyrics in it. So it's not a true instrumental, but sorry, I, I think I, I didn't catch what you just said. There's a song on the, on, um, what they hold undertow mm -hmm. they did an album called undertow there's a song called disgustipated and it's really long it's about nine minutes but there's a little bit of lyrics here and there mm -hmm. so it's not a true instrumental but it really is okay okay so in the way that dyer's eve not dyer's eve uh to live is to die by metallica is an instrumental even though there's a couple of words in it yeah it's that yeah, yeah. that kind of instrumental. yeah i considered that one and then that was a similar type thing um yeah also, that's a pretty light one, if I recall, right? Isn't that one light, and then it kind of comes in heavy? Um, but so the, live is the die. Yeah. Oh, you know that's that's got a heavy section, doesn't it? It's got yeah, a, it's got yeah. a really heavy section. Um, so this tool song, so I had, I I I don't have any objections to it musically. Do you know what I mean? But I think I had the same problem I generally run into with tool, which is. I find myself getting kind of caught in a trance. Do you know what I mean? Where yeah. it's like, and, yeah. 
and I don't escape from it and I don't really know where it's going. Um, and it, it was like, it was fine on Anima, but then when I got to the, you know, the next album, I was kind of like, I don't know if I want to keep doing this. And so that's yeah. been my experience with tool. I, I, they're very skilled though. So it's sort of like a reluctant criticism. My other issue is just as a guitar player, I feel like the guitar player is very good at, uh, at getting a sound right. And at shaping that sound and at getting rhythms and shaping the rhythms and it kind of doing all of like the really sort of weird feedback stuff that Hendrix would do. And like, you know, like, like that's sort of the realm of guitar that he's, he's interested in mastering, right. Is the, is just the the atmospheric sounds that it can make, uh -huh. but he almost never plays a melody that I can hum. Do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I, I I can I can never remember what he actually yeah. played. I'm sort of like, wait, what did I just hear? And as a yeah. guitar player, that's very frustrating because yeah. I want to be able to mentally make a note of what I just heard. Um, again, and, I don't and, think it's a... and maybe that's why they're just so good. That's why I like Adam so much. Well. It could be. I mean, it's it, you know, it, it's not necessarily a bad thing what he's doing. It's just that it's 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 a frustrating experience for me because I come at it from a very guitar centric point of view, and I feel like the guitarist is relinquishing so much else to the rest of the band that it's uh it, it's 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 a little bit frustrating to hear. Um, uh, his side project is Voivod. I haven't and, heard his side project, so is that? And I should like them, but I don't. That's the sad part, right? Because I want to see and hear more of his work, uh -huh. but Voivod just doesn't grab me. Well, so I, I'm glad he brings his, sends his A game for for Tool. Well, and I I feel like he his, he kind of allows the bass and the drums to shine a lot more. Um, which maybe yeah. with that band, that's probably the right move. I don't know, you know, like yeah. Um, so so again, I don't I don't I don't have a issue with this being on the list or, you know, anything like that. But I just, um, I, I think for whatever reason, like after Anima, I just have a hard time connecting with the tool material. Um, right. but I can see why you like it because it did do some very interesting things. And when you, what you just said also suggested to me that I might've been missing the context because you said that it comes after this really powerful piece before. Yeah. And when I was listening to it, the part of the song that I liked is when the, like, is the sense of atmosphere it creates and this the the, the guitar slowly diminishes at a, at a certain yeah. point in the song and it feels like i don't know it just feels like something washing away do you know what i mean it feels yeah. like something i want to hear after i've just had an experience that's very stressful or right. after i've just been working out or something or whatever just so so i may be missing some of the context too um but yeah so i don't know any other thoughts on it if you do want to sit down and listen to that entire album, it's called Lateralis. It's just genius. There's two different ways to listen to the album. There's the order they put the songs in, and then there's the order that people have determined is the order you're supposed to listen to it based on the Fibonacci sequence. Okay. Um, because there's all this math going on on the album, and the song oh. itself, Lateralis, is built around the Fibonacci sequence, which we can talk about probably for another that's Episode. above. I know about the Fibonacci sequence, but it's well yeah. above my pay grade. Like I said, my my sense of rhythm <laughs> yeah. and timing is awful. Um, yeah, yeah. So, well, you should start a band. <laughs> well, I did it back in the day, but but I would leave the timing to the to the drummer, you know. <laughs> um, so, uh, but but um, but anyways, uh, moving on to number three. Uh, my number three is Icarus Dream Suite off of Rising Forest by Yngwie Malmsteen. Yeah. Malmsteen. Um, and so, number one, I want, that's not your number three by any chance, is it? That's not my number three, okay. but it's on my uh, list. Okay, all right. So so we're good there. Um, but again, this is an example of taking, uh, you know, take, taking a classical piece, Adagio, and, uh, and, and doing something, which I will say is definitely much more creative than what Sirith Ungle did. Um, right. And also, you 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 have to have him on on a list like this. You know, he's, he's yeah, he's, absolutely. He's the, he's whole the guitar virtuoso. Um, yeah, the whole list could have been even. Yeah. And and this is, I think, this is a very creative song. It's it, it's not an exact replication of Adagio, so it can go into all kinds of interesting places, and it gets the it gets the emotions of the song right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It gets it gets, and that's 
super important. So, you know, the, you know, the whole album is great. Rising Force is is an album that anybody that's interested in guitar should have. Um, so I don't know. Uh, you have any thought? Well, do you want to wait until you do yours, or do you want to comment yeah. on me choosing it at number three? I or? just I oh. want to say, yeah, I don't know why it's your number three, okay. bastard. Um, <laughs> when you get to it, I'll explain why I chose it. For yeah, no, part. it's fine. Um, I think um, I think it's disappointing that Ingve didn't create another album like this ever again. Mm. Uh, most of what he did after this was all power metal and flourishes and guitar solos that made no sense. And it was just him showing off at how fast he is. This is the only Ingve album that you really need in yeah. all honesty. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And then you can just go and look up a couple of songs on YouTube for some of the... Um, how Many Miles to Babylon is actually a pretty good song, but that takes years before he gets to something that good again. And, uh, yeah, no, he, uh, and, and, uh, and I guess just to explain why I put it at number three, so I'm not like, you're not wondering the whole time. The, the only reason is I'm, I'm just not enough of an Ingve fan to put it at number one or something. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, right. it, and I think part of it is, is, is the thing I mentioned before where I'm a, like, I, I like guitar players that are skilled and technical, but he gets to a level that sometimes I find slightly off-putting for some reason. Um, and yeah. you don't see it so much on this album, but I see you see it in some of his other works. Uh-huh. And, and, uh, and so I just... And, and also, it's, it's not... It's, even though it's... Uh, um, you know, he, he's, he's taking a lot of creative liberties, it's not an original piece. And so that was the other reason why I didn't want to put it higher up on the list. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. He's in. A, he's on the first G three album with Joe Satriani and Steve Vai, and they each play a piece of the. They they do their couple of songs and then uh, they each do their their segment of the show, and then all three of them come out together and do "Keep on Rocking in the Free World," and they get to the guitar solo, which is eighty seven minutes long or something. It's just <laughs> obnoxious, and. Uh, Joe Satriani will do his eight measures of guitar solo. Steve mm-hmm. Vai will do his eight measures. And then Ingve comes in and does his. And they do that 500 times across the solo. Joe does his style and it's it's poppy and jumpy and bouncy and it's really fun. And then Steve Vai does something that's funky and groovy. And then Ingve plays something as fast as human fucking possible every single time. The, yeah. It's they're adding something new every time they do the guitar solo. And then Ingve's just, let me show you how fast I am. Let me just yeah. show you why I am who I am. And so there's no, there's no creativity to what he is doing eventually. And I think a lot of that is his ego coming in and he just wants more recognition for being as fast and precise as he is. Well, and also it gets down. It's, it's one of the reasons why sometimes I really sometimes prefer less sweeping and less hammering. I, not that I don't like those techniques, but right. they sometimes gloss over the melody. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah, it, yeah. And so I, I like when I can hear the, the notes being played. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I agree. Uh, which, which was another reason why I like that Sirith Ungle piece. Even though it's sloppy, you hear a lot, you hear the individual notes. And when you hear somebody play uh, Takata and D, you hear the individual notes. It's actually... It's kind of a clumsy song, even when it's played on an organ. Do you know what I mean? It's, it, I'm always surprised at how the notes don't always flow. There's sort of a, uh, you know, you, you're sort of stuck. On, you can sort of feel yourself getting stuck on individual notes as you hear them. Um, but what's your number three? My number three is a Russian Circle Station. This um, was an interesting that, one. This was a very interesting one. Go, go yeah, the, I, this is the first song I heard from them. I stumbled upon them a few years ago. And all they do is instrumentals. They don't have a vocalist. And uh, if I hadn't countered this song first, I don't know how I would have felt about them. But this one, this is everything I want in an instrumental. It it has it has a nice long plotting intro, and then as soon as they decide to stop doing the little bit of plucking and the bass line that they're doing, as soon as they turn it up a notch, I think it's at about the two minute mark. You're just punched in the face. Yep. And it is everything you like about metal. It's everything you like about an instrumental. And I there I have no complaints about it. And the only reason it's not number one 
is because the other two are so obvious. And one of them, obviously, is Yngwie, because we've already said it's on my list. Um, um, yeah, no, I thought this was a really good song. And I, yeah. re- I think you showed me this album before, because the cover that I saw hmm. of it looked familiar. Um, but the, uh, the, the, the thing, when I, when I first saw the title, I was like, this better be a triplet. Do you know what I mean? Like if if you got circle in the title, you got it's got to be a triplet. And so I was yeah. I was very happy that it was a triplet. Um, and and, and I, I I thought it just had it just had it had a lot of energy too. Uh, it it right. held my interest, and it was technically very well done. So and and it was still heavy. So especially like you said, like as you know when it gets into the song. So yeah. So that was a good choice, and that was a song I didn't know about until you showed it to me. Yeah, well, that's the advantage of doing these kind of lists, right? This yeah. is a, a tougher one because there's not a lot to choose from. Yeah. But when we do top fives, I think we should be exploring space that other people haven't heard too much of. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's a good idea. Um, and I mean, and, and definitely we're getting a lot of that uh, from you. But also, you know, I'm occasionally throwing in my Takatas and D. Um, and so the the uh, the next, the, so what are we on, number two now? You were on there number two, yeah. Okay, all right. So number two, my number two is March of the Crabs by Anvil off of Metal on Metal. Um, yeah. Which, again, I should preface this by saying I'm not actually much of an Anvil fan. It's not that I dislike them. I just don't know their music that well. But but this is a song that I really like. And it's just got a... Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a it's a fun song. It's got a lot of crunch to it. It reminds yeah. me a little bit of the Iron Maiden song, Phantom of the Opera the uh the chorus part sort of there's a section that's sort of similar uh to the to the um to one of the the melodies that they play in 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 the march but but i think it's it's a good song and also this is a band that you know most of my awareness of them comes from the documentary anvil and so i had never heard of them until that documentary yeah yeah that's i mean yeah. and i thought that, it was fantastic that, yeah yeah that, and so so I, I, I was glad that I was able to put one of their songs on the list because they're sort of famous for not getting the recognition they deserve. Um, they're famous for not being famous. Yeah. 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 So, so I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on this song or uh... I, I want to say that I tried listening to Anvil in the past mm-hmm. and they're just so bad. Mm-hmm. Um, they do need to be recognized for pretty much inventing the sound that bands like Anthrax would make famous. Um, but most of what they do is just so immature, I guess is the best way to describe it. Their <laughs> lyrics are dumb. The they they haven't changed any of their format ever. If you listen to any album, mm-hmm. it's the same thing. It's the same ten songs every time. Okay. It's just you know slightly different rhythms, slightly different lyrics. That's it. Okay. But this song that you chose, all that said, this song was fantastic. I was blown away at how good it was. Yeah, it's a good song. It's a surprisingly yeah. good song. Um, it is. And it's just got it. Just I don't know. It's, it it moves me when I listen to it. You know, it, it, it's a it's a very effective song. Um, so what's your number two? Uh, my number two is is you're going to be your number one, which is Metallica Orion. Okay, okay. I so so go ahead. What I give your thoughts? Uh, and I the only reason I didn't put it number one is because I have so many things I want to say about Ingve when we get to my number one. Um, but. This is such an obvious choice for instrumental because it does everything right. Yeah. Um, and you could choose Call of Cthulhu or you could choose the other one, the uh, To Live Is To Die, and they're all fantastic. But Orion, that bass line that Cliff has going in Orion, you cannot touch it anywhere. And it, it, it escalates at all the right points. And had it had lyrics... I think it wouldn't have been as good, despite the fact that the structure for lyrics is built right into it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's an it's an amazing song. This is yeah, um, I'm out of words. To it, it, it's it. something about. It's also got to do with, you know, where it resides, you know, on the spectrum of sound. Like it's a, it's a very low end sound. It's not like Call of Cthulhu is much higher up on the neck of the guitar. Right. Um, to live in to, to to live uh, sorry to live is to die is 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 a higher up song. This this is a very deep sound, and I think that comes from the bass line that you're talking. You know, this is a very bass led uh, instrumental piece, and it's also got kind of like a it's got a fuzz and a groove, and it 
it's also it's got a sound that I don't think I've ever really heard anywhere else. Do you know what I mean? It's it's not it's not a typical metal song. Um, it, I I would still say it's metal, but there's something very just out of the box about it, where it you know it it always when I, when you listen to Master of Puppets it stands out right, but also just in terms of the metal as a genre it stands out so. Um, but but I'm I'll, humming it in my head while you talk. That's how good it is. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a really terrific song. So yeah, I mean, I'm I, trying to yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was gonna say. So I have no objection to to you putting that at number two. I think that's a yeah. Well, you're gonna put it at number one. Yeah, so. Yeah. So, <laughs> so so now we can go and repeat ourselves on number one, yeah. where uh, I chose Orion. And I, I mean, I don't need to repeat what I just said. I suppose, but I put it at number one because for all the reasons that you basically said, you know. Yeah. It, um, and, and also the, the biggest reason is of all the songs in this list, this is the one that I would want to hear the most. If I, you know, if I, if I, yeah. I'm happy to hear all of them, but, but, uh, but this is the one that, that, that I'm the most happy to hear, you know, on a given day. Um, and so, so I don't know why don't we move into your, your number one pick. So I wanted to pick either Black Star or Far Beyond the Sun mm-hmm. for this slot. And I think Far Beyond the Sun would have been a pretty obvious choice as well for this slot. Uh, but I picked Icarus Dream Suite because it does so many different things as opposed to just having Far Beyond the Sun is just him just smashing you in the face with speed. Yeah. But also showing you this really interesting melody. And I used to hum that nearly every day when I was in uh, high school in 10th grade. Um, that that do that opening to where did you, where did you hum it? Uh, walking to school in the morning. Um, I wouldn't hum it in front of others. I thought I, yeah, I thought you might have been annoying your teachers or something. No, 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 no. no. Um, so I picked Icarus Dream Street and I picked Angve for the top because that album, all across that album, there you can't really find any flaws. Um, no, it's a it's a solid album. It's definitely and, a solid album. And I I so because for me metal at that time there weren't a lot of great bands to to grab a hold of. For somebody to do what he did and and mix classical with metal the way that he did, it was just it it there it, there was this there was this change for me as a fan of metal. Mm. Um, and I think that without Ingve, I don't unlock my ability to love progressive metal okay no i i can definitely see that i can definitely so, see that so this song while probably not my absolute favorite to listen to over and over and over again on this album i think black star and far beyond the sun have some have more fun to them this one has so much range yeah. of what it does and how he does it that i i just can't get enough and i mean he was pretentious enough to put opus five at the end of it uh, when he didn't have to and the well and the um the 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 other thing about that album too is that like some of the other songs like i i always like the song um what is it as above so below and i'm not yeah. really i'm not a power metal fan but that's like right. a real proto power metal song yeah and it's good it's it's it, it 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 does what power metal is supposed to do and it it doesn't feel cheesy. Do you know what I mean? It kind of it, it it revs you up in a way that 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 uh, you know just most songs can't 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 do that. And, and power metal sort of is trying too hard to do it, but but the way it's done in that song, I really like it. And also, I like the song. Uh, what is it? Now your ships are burned. Now um, your ships are burned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but Icarus Dream Suite's a you know is is a it's it, you know I I I included it on my list. I just didn't put it at the top, but I have zero objection to you putting it at number one i think it's i think it's a, a really great example of of uh you know ex- extraordinarily technical guitar playing and and playing it without losing the spirit of guitar do you know what i mean it, it, yeah it can be so easy to like i said some of his later works can get into that zone of uh i'm just sort of riding on top of all these modes and scales and this one it's 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 got like a uh it's got you know the emotions are all right and so that's 
you know, it, it, it makes it effective. Um, and uh, and also, I mean, it's just this is an album like like again, people really need to to, to get Rising Force if they haven't listened to it. It's it's just yeah. one of those albums that everybody should really listen to. It. I I actually waited a while to uh, my cousin got it before I did, and I was reluctant to pick it up. Um, and you know, it wasn't for you know, I waited like a year or two before sitting down and actually listening to it. And it you know, it, it's it's um because I think. I think I think the uh, the prospect of listening to a guitar centric album, even to a guitarist, is intimidating. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, but yeah. This is not. A, there's nothing unpleasant about this album. It it, it 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 has none of the downsides of a guitar centric album, uh, which is yeah. you know one of its big strengths. Um, so yeah, so I don't know. Um, I guess we can get into the generalities of instrumental pieces in a moment but i did want to do some honorable mentions did you have any i just i have one and uh one of the things i want to say about this first of all somebody gave us this idea yeah somebody emailed you and said you guys should do one on instrumental so i would have never considered doing this two there's a lot of instrumentals that i like that aren't metal and that made this a little harder scorpions coast to coast strikes me as one of those perfect rising falling melodic pieces yeah. that that get you in the right way but it's not metal right it's it's a softer song yeah for quote unquote softer moments um i was going for humor there did not work <laughs> well <laughs> i just think um i just think uh i just think it's really hard to, to do just metal instrumentation list like this. So whoever gave us this, I, I love you and curse you at the same time because you made us think, yeah. but you really put us in a narrow box. Well, and you know we're going to get flooded with all of the instrumental metal pieces that are out there that, that we have. Yeah, to yeah. everybody's uh, going to tell us how wrong and yeah. how did you skip this. Yeah. And so, I, so, so, yeah, and also the criteria was a big factor here. There were a lot of songs that we had to nix because of the criteria. Um, so so one that, that, that I really like that wasn't able to put in the list was King Diamond's Insanity off of The Eye. Um, and, and so, you know, that, you know, and, and I, I, I sort of, agree. Jim, you, you told me that that wasn't metal. And I, I yeah. basically agreed with you that that's, that was, yeah. you know, um, but an, another one that is one of my absolute favorite instrumental pieces. It's not particularly complicated, but there's a song and, and, and the performance of it is a little bit rough, but it's uh desolate ways by morbid angel, which um, I don't know how deep you are into the death metal scene, Jim, but at the time, I remember like everybody that was into death metal, this was the song to know how to play. Do you know what I mean? It was, uh, it was just, yeah. it was, it was just an instant win. If you knew how to play this song. Um, um. I tried listening to Norbert Angel, I wanted to say 87 or 88 when they were first around. I think when they were first showing up. And I just couldn't get into it. It was just... They're they're a, a tough band to uh, to get into. Um, yeah. You, and, they're, and, and they're honestly probably... You know, like bands like Death and Obituary, I think, have a little bit more... They're, they're, they're a better first step into the genre. Yeah. Um, but uh, but but honestly, this is really the you know I mean I, I I did listen to Morbid Angel, but this is the only song that I really care about in hindsight. Do you know what I mean? Like after the fact, um, and so and also it's a surprising song to hear on a death metal album. Um, I think also we want to give uh, a shout out to Call of Cthulhu. That is a good instrumental piece. Um, yeah, it's got a really amazing opening. Uh, melodic line and chord progression um it's it's just i think uh it, it's it, it requires a little bit more work to listen to than orion does do you know what i mean so you know that, that's that's why i wouldn't have put it on the list um another one that i think is a good instrumental that people should check out is buckethead's version of the halloween theme um it's it's really interesting because he's he he plays both the bass line and the melody on the neck of the guitar at the same time, and you know that's not an easy thing to do. So it's you know you you could probably go on YouTube and find videos of him doing it. If uh, um, if you ever want 
to have a fun exercise, go on Wikipedia and look it up. Look up Buckethead, and look at how many songs he's written. He's 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 made a grotesque number of songs. I he puts everybody to shame. There, is, I don't honestly, I don't know how he does it. I don't even know how there's enough hours in the day. I mean, Buckethead's an interesting musician. I a lot, some of his stuff I really like, but some of his he puts out so much, it's inevitable. Some of the stuff you're not gonna like, right? Like when sure. somebody's putting out that much content, it's just inevitable. Um, but also, why I've were, never. Why under- were you looking at me funny when you said that, Brendan? What? No, 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 no. I, I wasn't looking at. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking. Is that. that because I put out forty games a year? Is no, that no, what no, you're no. That's not. I, I, I was not. I, I was not. Thinking I feel attacked. Um, no, I. I it's just that no, but I mean, he puts out like a ridiculous yeah. amount for for music. That's a ridiculous for gaming. That's not ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? Like no, 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 like, no. What I do is ridiculous, and what he does is more ridiculous. Okay. Because no, I'm not going to defend myself at all. I think what he is doing, and to put out that many 30 minute long songs in some cases, right? Mm. Some of these are long songs. Uh, to do that requires uh, not only a passion, but an understanding of music that I cannot, I cannot even understand how he gets there. I can't fathom what kind of brain it takes to do that. So, with Buckethead, I understand the mask and I understand the hair. I do not understand the bucket part of the equation. The <laughs> the the Kentucky Fried Chicken thing. I just can't stop thinking about how it's a bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken on his head, and right. it, it 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 just seems wrong. It seems wrong, and it's just—I don't know. I, I've, ne- I've never understood the look. Um, but he's an—he's an—he's an unbelievably gifted guitar player, and 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 he's great at just—I mean, I can't imagine being able to write that amount of music. It, it's, it, and the problem with Buckethead is, how do you pick just one song? If honestly, yeah. if we were going to say he has to be on one of our lists, how do you narrow it down? Because the catalog you have to go through to say, no, that's my favorite. No, yeah. that's my favorite. Well, it's, yeah. And the reason I picked this one was one, I know everybody would know the Halloween theme. Do you know I mean? It's just, it's a familiar yeah. song. So you don't have to be into Buckethead to enjoy it when you hear it. But number two, it's just, it's kind of an interesting thing seeing somebody do that on the neck. I tried doing it and it's not easy. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, that kind of hammering can be difficult to to do while you're playing a bass line the way he is doing. So, uh, so it's it's pretty impressive. Another one is I liked uh, D by Randy Rhodes off of the Blizzard of Oz album. Um, you know, I've I've always I, I've always enjoyed that, and he's kind of one of the first neoclassical guys. So, um, you know, and that's definitely just like basically his attempt to do a classical piece. So, you know, I, I think I think that that's worthy of mention as well, and. Um, the other one is uh, Speed Metal Symphony by Cacophony, um, which I think is a really good instrumental song. It's just I just don't like it enough to put it on a top five list. Um, but I don't know. Did you have any? Oh, and, and The Ides of March by Iron Maiden. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned it, that song earlier. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make sure it got its honorable mention at this right. segment. Um, I don't know. Any any other thoughts on uh, on instrumentals in general i think they are tough to do i i think a song like eruption which isn't even metal um i don't even think that counts as instrumentation it's just a guitar player showing off speed right it's yeah i think an instrumental needs to have all the pieces of the band in it except for the vocalist obviously and i think everybody needs a a moment to shine and if you're not doing that uh, I, I think if you're not doing that, it's you're just I don't know. I think you're masturbating a little bit. With uh, with eruption, I feel like like I like eruption. It's a very fun song to play. I think it's a very melodic song. It's got it's got a nice sound to it. Um, but it's not really a complete song. Do you know what I mean? It's 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 very it's very short. And and uh, and and I, and I agree with you. It doesn't really have the spirit of metal. Do you know what I mean? It's more yeah. of a there. Whenever I think Van Halen, I can only think neon spandex and like all of the things that go with Van Halen, and <laughs> and it's because there's that's what they sound like too. Right. You know what I mean, right. so it, it just it, it's just hard for me to 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 think of them as metal when they're they're important to metal, but I just don't think of them as metal. Do you know? Does that make sense? Like, yeah, you can't you can't ignore Van Halen, 
but I don't particularly care for them. And um, another thing is, Eruption was on every like I, I I went through some of the top five, top ten instrumentalists online to see what other people were saying. And number one, I found fa- I find these lists on websites very suspect and very uh, I don't know. Very, I think what tends to happen is over time enough people select this or that song and it just gets repeated enough that it becomes the song that makes it on the list. And so I think eruption is one of those songs. Um, I don't think it belongs on a top 10 or top five uh, instrumental (laughs) metal list. Um, So, yeah, so, so, so I I agree with you there. Uh, And, and yeah, so I don't know. in terms of um, in terms of you know future top five lists, we definitely want to hear from people. We definitely want to uh, you know get ideas from folks. We 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 have we have some we have some thoughts. Um, you know, I, I and I I think that uh, I think it's a really good format for discussion. So we'll, we'll have more of these going forward. Um, Hopefully, we'll have a break. Before we do another top five, I want to talk about other things. Yeah, yeah. Besides our favorites of things. Well, well, and the problem with the top five format is it um, it forces us to go in order and hold our thoughts until we get to the right time. And you know, the, it's 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 a good format, but it's also a very restrictive format. So it's it, we can't just go and talk about random things for twenty minutes that are interesting. Um, so yeah, I, I agree. We don't want to just have a. a a top five after top five after top five after top five um no what I, one thing i would like to do at some point is i want to do a, a seventh sun episode because that's come up a lot um i feel like just I, talk about the whole album just yeah just a, the whole album i don't know read the book if we want to 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 add some extra dimension to the discussion but um but yeah i just just i, I think it would be an interesting uh conversation there you go there's our next episode all right, yeah, we could do that. I'll, 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 I'm on board for that. Um, all right, so we will, we will let everyone go. We've been talking for like 50 minutes here, and again, people who contact us, we really appreciate it. Uh, we've been this, this, this show for some reason really sparks comments from people. So I've been getting more feedback than we normally get, and I'm enjoying it. And I would like for people to feel free to send us more comments and questions. And so until next episode, we will talk to you later. Bye.